we have had some very beautiful scenes and beautiful carols we were being led through the christmas journey to meet jesus the baby jesus encounter the son of god and let us also as we are journeying through these days of especially this time of the liturgical season when we are journeying through advent waiting for the lord you know this even this this uh, small play and the carols the season is preparing us to receive jesus once again let us prayerfully reflect for a few moments on the meaning of christmas for each one of us how can this christmas be again a wonderful season a time to experience what this season brings we listen to the scripture Uh, from the gospel of saint john chapter 1 verse 14 the word became flesh he lived among us and we saw his glory the glory that he has from the father as only son of the father full of grace and truth the word of the lord so dear brothers and sisters saint john the apostle who was very close to jesus is explaining for each one of us the in a way the meaning of christmas what is it exactly that we are all celebrating we know that all the feasts of the church have to somehow lead us you and me to a deeper experience of god it has to somehow transform us somehow touch us somehow bring some new life some news of hope something has to take place as we celebrate feast something has to happen we know we all of us want some experience from jesus a special encounter with jesus something that happens which really changes our life transforms our life all of us want to encounter the lord to see the lord to hear the lord to experience the lord and we should never this season is reminding us we should never give up that hope that all of us can experience the lord experience jesus we heard how mary was praying with faith and we know she encountered god or god came to her god spoke to her and there was the good news and we know what was special about mother mary she believed the gospel believed what was spoken to her she put her faith in what god said god's word so this season first of all encourages us again first of all to pray lord i want to encounter you i want a fresh experience of you I want to see you. I want to experience you. Just like our blessed mother really prayed. She prayed for herself, she prayed for the world. And we know God sent the angel to her. God spoke to her. So first of all, all of us, you and me, we all need to hear the word of the Lord. God has to speak to us. for something to happen in our life god has to speak god has to say the word god spoke to mary and she conceived so first of all god has to speak to us nothing is impossible for god a great word from the bible in luke 137 which the angel said for there is nothing that god cannot do so all of us need this faith 
God can do all things. With God, all things are possible. This is the first step. And we have to pray, Lord, speak to me this Christmas. Speak to me. Let us pray with faith. That is the first thing we need to do. Again, approach this season, approach the feast of Christmas with faith. Let us pray with faith. Lord, let me encounter you. Grant me the grace to know you. Secondly, once we pray to the Lord, Lord, speak to me with faith, you know, God will speak to us. God will come to us. And there are those words of the centurion who said to Jesus, the faith that he had in Jesus, Lord, I am a man with authority myself. A centurion, he was in charge of a hundred soldiers. He was a man with authority. And Jesus, he came to Jesus and said, Lord, please heal my servant. My servant is, is suffering. We know there was a great miracle, but how did that miracle come about? That centurion said to the Lord, Lord, my servant is sick, please heal him. Jesus said to him, I will come down, I will heal your servant. But the centurion said to Jesus, Lord, I am not, I am a man under authority myself. I say to my servant, go and he goes, come and he comes. I am not worthy for you to enter my house, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. So we can see this centurion, what great faith he had in the word of Jesus. Lord, if you say the word, it will happen. And the Bible tells us, the gospels tell us, Jesus was amazed at the centurion's faith and he said, Truly, he said to his disciples, truly I tell you, I have never seen faith such as this in Israel. That means among, even among God's chosen people, I have never seen so much faith. We know that. And his servant, Jesus said, let it happen to you as you believe. And the servant was healed at that very hour. So dear brothers and sisters, first of all, let us, let us again, let us... Uh, pray, let us reflect, let us pause for a moment, let us pray to Jesus as we approach this feast of Christmas Lord make me encounter you in a fresh way, in a new way grant me the grace to hear your words, grant me the grace to hear you speaking to me, to encounter you and also grant me faith to believe you, believe your words, whatever you say will happen so dear brothers and sisters, let us approach the Lord with faith. And secondly, something that again should, should touch us is, you know how Jesus came into the world. All of us would like to see Jesus. There is nobody, I don't think there's anybody sitting here who would not like to see Jesus. Do you all like to see Jesus? Yes, yes. Everyone, everyone likes to see Jesus, to have Jesus close to them. Then there is, a, there is a question that we all ask ourselves as we enter into the mystery of Christmas. How did Jesus come into the world? How did Jesus come close to us? How did Jesus come into this world? And again, how can Jesus come into my life? How can I experience Jesus? We know how Jesus comes, came into the world and how Jesus comes into the world today, how Jesus enters our life today, how the presence of Jesus manifests himself, itself, in our lives too. Jesus is the word of God. And if we need to experience Jesus, we need to follow that same path which Mother Mary walked. How did the... How did Jesus become flesh in her? How did she carry Jesus? How was Jesus born from her? 
How did she have Jesus for herself? How did Jesus grow in her house? How did Jesus appear for her? We know she received the word of God with faith. The word of God is Jesus. So this season also invites us, if we want to see Jesus, if we want to experience Jesus, if you and I have to draw closer to Jesus, if we want to taste Jesus, if we want to have Jesus in our daily life, we know there is no other way. We have to approach the word of God. All of us have to approach, and we know it's not difficult for us to approach the word of God. The Bible is right there in our houses. This book is close to us. The word is near to us. We hear the word. We hear the word in the gospel, whenever the gospel is preached in the church, in other places. We hear the word of God. God speaks to us also in our own daily lives. God comes to us. He is speaking to us, whispering to us. But sometimes you and I cannot recognize his voice. Sometimes we can't discern his voice. There are so many voices. Sometimes we can't hear God's voice, God's word. But God's word is coming to us. Let me draw an example from the Bible, from the prophet Elijah. The prophet Elijah was a prophet of God. You know who is a prophet? Prophet, the word says, uh, the word means one who, does anybody know the meaning of prophet here? Anyone knows? Yes? Uh, a prophet is a messenger of God's word. Messenger of God's word. Yes, it's almost uh, correct. One who speaks on God's behalf, or one who speaks God's word. In fact, one of the great privileges granted to us as Christians, as Catholics, as Christians, is that all of us, we are all baptized we are all anointed. In the Bible, anointing has a very special meaning. We know it's not ordinary people that were anointed. Okay, let me ask the children a question. Have all of you been anointed? What do you think? Have all of you been anointed? Anointed means, okay, somebody's asking me the question, what do you mean by anointed? Okay, anointing means with sacred oil or chrism, have you been signed? Yes. yes. When was it? Baptism. Baptism. And again at? Confirmation. Confirmation. Okay, yes. You have the right answers. We are all anointed, all of us. And you, all of us are anointed, which means all of us are part of God's people, the people of God, and anointed as priest, prophet and king, priest, prophet and king. All of us, we are all part of the royal priesthood. We are all a prophetic people, God's own people, and we are all a royal race. That's what the Bible tells us. So this is just to, to, uh, to refresh ourselves. What privilege we have been given. We are all a prophetic people. In other words, all of us are people to whom God speaks. We are all people to whom God uh, speaks, all people who encounter the Lord, who are supposed to encounter the Lord. Now, Elijah was a prophet. But we see, I would just like to draw an example from the Bible, how in our lives too, an encounter with the Lord can happen. In the first book of the Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10, Prophet Elijah was, he had to suffer a lot. He had to run because he spoke the truth and he was persecuted to run. And he prayed for death. You know, sometimes in our lives too, we can get tired. We can say, Lord, enough. I had enough. Nothing is working out. And 
Lord, I had enough. All of us can say that at some point of time. But then, in a completely unexpected way, Elijah went on into the desert, a day's journey, sitting under a first bush, wished he were dead. Lord, he said, I have had enough. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down and went to sleep. Then all of a sudden an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked and there at his head was a scone baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat or the journey will be too long for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by that food. He walked for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, God's mountain. Then he went into a cave and spent the night there. Then, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? So here we can see in, in the account of uh, how God is encountering Elijah. The word of the Lord came to him. So dear brothers and sisters, I would just like to share all of us, this Christmas, we know this Christmas is all about the nativity of Jesus, Jesus being born into the world. We rejoice in Jesus coming into the world. But all of us, let us all wish, let us all pray for, let us all long for. You know, we have to cross a certain boundary. We have to take a if you want to meet Jesus, if you want to encounter Jesus, we have to cross a threshold. We have to take that step of faith and go forward. We have to come out of ourselves, our lethargy, our unbelief. Sometimes we, we know why we don't encounter the Lord, because we conclude nothing is going to happen. Oh, nothing is going to change. If I pray, God is not going to hear. I'm not going to experience the Lord. No, we have to pray with faith. We have to pray. So let us, dear brothers, let us have a deep thirst to encounter Jesus, to see Jesus, to really have the presence of Jesus in our lives. Let us make that step of faith. Let us cross that threshold. Let us pray deeply as we approach this Christmas. Lord, make me encounter you. And we can be sure if we make that step of faith, if we really have that thirst, the word of the Lord is going to come to us. All of us, God is going to speak to us. God is, and that word becomes flesh. We know that is Jesus in each one of us. Receive the word, hear the word, allow that word to become flesh, as in our blessed mother. So dear brothers and sisters, let us take this... Uh, Christmas once again as our opportunity to allow Jesus to come to us, hear him speaking and his presence to manifest ourselves in his presence to manifest itself in our lives. Let us continue our journey with the Lord with faith. Let us experience the coming of Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. We pray for a few moments. Let us close our eyes.